So you want a new gaming card in the sub sort of 300 pound range, but you're not quite sure what to get, especially now that Nvidia has launched two new cards, the 1660 and the 1660 Ti's. These are rather interesting because both of their price point and their performance, and we're going to take a look at them and compare them to the reigning value champion, the RX 580. So let's start off with the specs of the new cards before we jump into the performance and starting off with the, the newest one, the 1660. That one has 1,408 CUDA cores with a standard boost clock of 1785 megahertz, although aftermarket cards may have higher boost clocks than this, so make sure you check out the card that you're planning on picking up, but otherwise still pretty impressive. The TI version has, as you would expect, a few more CUDA cores at 1536 with a slightly lower boost clock of 1708, although again this may vary depending on which card you look at. Both cards do have 6 gigabytes of VRAM, although the 1660 non-TI uses GD DDR5, whereas the 1660 Ti uses GDDR6. So now you know the core specs of the cards, let's take a look at their performance. I'm benchmarking at 1080p with Apex Legends, Fortnite, PUBG, and Battlefield 5, and they're all on high or ultra settings, generally speaking, with a few tweaks in certain games like Apex Legends, with the texture streaming budget set to the 6GB recommended uh, for all of them, despite obviously the RX 580 having 8GB of RAM. So starting off with Apex Legends, we have 110 FPS average for the 1660 Ti, 103 for the 1660, and 88 for the 580. Of course, this will all vary depending on a lot of factors, including where you are on the map, but they're all still plenty smooth. In terms of Battlefield 5, we're looking at, uh, with DirectX 12 and Ultra settings, 82 FPS average for the Ti, with 73 for the 1660, and then a much closer race at 70 FPS for the 580. Obviously, DirectX 12 does tend to benefit AMD a little bit more. On PUBG, we're looking at 103, 97, and 83 FPS respectively, which are all great scores, of course, a little bit higher on the Nvidia side of things. And then with Fortnite, we're looking at a bit more of a graduated step here with 130 for the 1660 Ti, with the 112 for the standard 1660, and down at 82 for the 580. Still plenty smooth, but of course, the higher cards will be better fire refresh rates. So keeping in mind the performance numbers you've just seen, we now need to take a look at the price. Now, this does vary depending on where and when you watch this, so do use the links in the description down below to find out pricing, well, when and where you watch this, uh, and kind of make your own conclusions, but for the time being, and as I'm filming and in the UK, the pricing for these cards are, roughly speaking, uh, for the RX 580, you're looking at about 200 to 210 pounds. The 1660 non-TI is a little bit more, about 10 to 20 pounds more, at about 220 to 240, with the TI version sitting about 260. They do bear in mind you can also get different versions of these cards like say an ASUS Strix version which tends to be a bit more expensive so keep in mind that this is sort of average pricing rather than the uh, extremes that you can get. So when you take into consideration the pricing and the performance that you get, the 1660 and the 1660 Ti are actually pretty impressive value for money. The 1660 versus the RX 580 which is really the kind of key comparison here, uh, both of them are fantastic cards, both of them give you great performance so the 1660 does seem to edge out a little bit, if a little bit more expensive, and we're talking like 10 to 20 pounds more expensive. So, well, if you've just picked up an RX 580, for example, I wouldn't worry too much. It's still a fantastic card, and it should still do you fine, especially for 1080p gaming for a while. But if you're planning on picking up a new system, the 1660 does look like an interesting option. The TI is actually even more interesting because it gives you very similar performance to a 2060 for over 100 pounds less, which is is actually, uh, again, very impressive, uh, especially when it comes to the, the more value for money side of things. Now, of course, that doesn't have the RTX options, so if you do want the better shadows or lighting in the games that support it, or DLSS, then you might want to shell out for 2060, but in this sort of price range, the sub £300 dollar range, these cards are all pretty interesting. With that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're planning on picking up any of these cards, which one are you thinking about? Has your decision changed since the newer cards have launched, or have you been sticking to your guns and getting whichever one you fancy? Do let me know in the comments down below, I would love to hear from you. And of course, if you want to pick up any of the cards that I've talked about here, then you check out the links in the description down below. 
You can also check out the rest of the links in the description to support the channel, whether that's the new merch designs, and thank you to Luca for suggesting this design with a cool logo on the back as well. And otherwise, there's also the Amazon and Overclock Educate affiliate links, which don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do. You can also check out the Patreon link if you want to support me directly and get cool rewards for doing so, or check out Private Internet Access, which is a great and cheap VPN, or Humble Bundle, which is a great way to get cheap games and support charities too. You can also hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel and check out the other videos over there. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.